Hi there, two beavers. It's Cindy Ellen from Paper Crafts by Cindy Ellen. Did you wonder what happened to me? I'm about to tell you what has happened to me. So, um, some of you know that uh, one of the reasons I do paper crafts is because I'm disabled. And I think I've talked a little bit about the fact that I have rheumatoid arthritis and I have um, something called ME, which is myologic encephalot encephalot I can never pronounce it. It's chronic fatigue syndrome is the popular name for it. And um, I like to pretend that I don't have it because um, I also have a lot of education and I had um, a really long career in the professional world and um, I like to pretend that those things are more important than what happens to me now. And so on August 7th, I flew up to Vermont and if you're friends with me on Instagram or you're friends with me on Facebook, then you know that I had an absolutely amazing vacation with my kids. Um, and we had a wonderful time. We rented a house in Vermont, very close to where the kids grew up, and we did all kinds of things. Um, but one of the things I did is I walked a couple of miles every day, just about every day, and we played games, and I stayed up late, and even just talking about it makes me tired. <laughs> I guess I'm still recovering. Um, but I had rested before I went. I rested while I was going there. And um, I came home on a Tuesday. I came home August 20th. Um, rested for a couple of days. And on August 23rd, I went to a conference um, for another group that I belong to. That group that I make all those cards for at the end of the month with the birthdays. Yeah, that one. And um, I was gone for Friday and Saturday and attending workshops and doing things and put on a lunch for, helped put on a lunch for 300 people, which was also exhausting. Uh, came home on Saturday night because I just couldn't do it anymore. Rested all day Sunday and then taught a two week class on relapse prevention and recovery skills to a group of eight which is wonderful and great and it's only two hours a day but I did that over the last week of August and the first week of September which was also when we were all preparing for Dorian it's a lot like being chased by a turtle no no bite me no no I mean and worrying about you know who's getting hit down there and friends and relatives and yeah. Anyway, so uh, I really wanted to take some time. It's Philosophical Thursday. So what a great time to take some time. It's the second Thursday of September. And so let me tell you a little bit about what chronic fatigue is because I don't, most of the time I don't look like I have a chronic illness. I sort of look like everybody's grandma. I've got some wrinkles. I've got some, um, I'm a little bit overweight. Mostly that's from taking steroids because I really don't eat that much folks. Um, and I don't exercise, I, I don't really exercise. But people with chronic fatigue usually have um, some sort of autoimmune um, event. In my case, it was Lyme disease. Um, and depending on who you talk to up in Vermont, I have chronic Lyme disease down here in Florida. Um, that's all in my head and it's a made up disease and um, it um, doesn't exist. But anyway, I had chronic Lyme disease and then usually they have some sort of autoimmune thing happen and then they have some sort of traumatic uh, medical event. In my case in 2004 I had back surgery 
um, and I had, I not only had surgery for my back, but I had skin removed from my front and my back. So I had basically seven and a half hours worth of surgery. They repaired my stomach muscles, my rectus abdominis muscles. They took skin off my front. They moved my belly button. They took skin off my back. They tried to fuse my back, um, which by the way was unsuccessful um, at the time, although it's successful now because I no longer have an L4 or an L5 or an S1 vertebrae. I just have one solid mass of bone. It's called a stenosis back there. She found out when I medically disqualified myself to work at Disney anymore. Anyway, but that was a long time ago. It was 15 years ago. But anyway, what happened was, uh, what happens in chronic fatigue, they think, they think, is that it causes your immune system to start overreacting to everything. So the combination of um, a pretty serious threat to your immune system, like having double pneumonia or having Lyme disease or having some, some sort of serious threat to your immune system, followed by a medical trauma, in my case, seven and a half hours of surgery, um, causes your body causes your immune system to start attacking itself. They're not really sure about that, but what it does is it, 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 it causes a breakdown in the way your body uses oxygen. It causes a breakdown in the way your body uses sleep. Um, it causes a breakdown in the way your body uses adrenaline. So that, um, when people with CFS or ME exercise, they get something called post-exertional malaise. And that means that basically when I use my muscles, when I carry things, when I work at something, when I go for a walk, when I do yoga, when I run, when I do whatever, and I used to be an avid runner and marathoner and hiker, when I do that, my body doesn't know how to use oxygen, so it leaves the broken down oxygen in my muscles and my muscles get really weak. And so the more I work out, the weaker my muscles get and the longer it takes me to recover from exercise. How exciting. Um, one of the things that also happens is when I do anything, whether it's go to a meeting, um, walk on Mount Mansfield, uh, teach a two hour class, the next day I may be exhausted because my body, in order to do that, releases a lot of adrenaline. It's sort of like, ah, we're doing something. Oh my God, ah. Kind of like if you were performing a play, except in normal people, it's as if you were performing a play or running a marathon for 24 hours. And then it's that level of exhaustion afterwards. And whereas normal people take a day to recover, it takes someone with ME, CFS, three to five days to recover if they can recover. So the only cure for this is pacing and learning how to do this. Uh, learning how to pace. And what that means is I get to do one, one, count them, one thing a day. And um, sometimes that means going to a book group because I have a book group of friends that I love. Or I can go out to lunch with that group of friends. Or I can go out to lunch with my husband, or I can exercise. Notice these aren't and, or I can take a shower. And I know that sounds kind of stupid because you're like, what? Like take a shower? So the interesting thing about taking a shower is it's water hitting your body and your body takes that as a sign of stimulation and anything that stimulates your body 
your body takes like you're running a marathon. And I had been doing so well that I forgot all of that and I uh, thought there was enough recovery time and I even built recovery time into traveling to Vermont, but not enough because flying in an airplane and pressure and then unpressure and then more pressure and then unpressure, two airplane flights to Vermont. Forgot that. And sitting upright, because on top of that, I have two stenosis. So I have the RA, and I have a stenosis in my neck and a stenosis in my spine, in my lower back. And I have the CFS because of all of that. Which means I have pain, which means I'm constantly triggering the CFS means I have had no videos for all of you. So at the same time, I want to tell you that I made cards for my group at the end of the month, but I didn't get them photographed. I, um, I have ideas. I'm, I'm, I have figured out the Filmora. I've just been too tired to post them. I have a new way I think I figured out a new way of putting some deco foil onto your projects, which may, get, may or may not get posted next week. Um, I've been playing with my stamp timber stuff. Um, but I have a choice. I can film things or I can play with them but I can't do both. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. What I'm learning is that, and what I'm gonna pass on to you, is that it makes, not it makes, What I'm learning is to listen to my heart and to listen to my body. What I'm learning is that I have value even when I have to spend a lot of time recovering. What I'm learning is it doesn't matter what I look like. What matters is self-care. What matters is my reality. You know, um, I was going to entitle this one, uh, if someone calls you a chair, it doesn't make you one. Because a lot of people have said to me in the last month, but you look great. And you know what? I might look great. But when I am in a CFS flare, I, um, I call, um, I'll call a stamp, um, a die. I will say 40 when I mean five, I will call red, green, um, who am I kidding? I'll call red round. Um, I replace words with different things because they get slippery and they change places because I'm really tired. Um, my hands start to shake. My vision is blurry and my vision gets double. Um, those aren't things you can see. My cards get crappy. I don't, I don't want to show you that. And I get disappointed in myself. But I also don't stop. I don't stop. Because everyone has value. And um, I'm not a chair and I'm getting better. Obviously, here I am. Hi, 
with my uh, Disney Churros shirt upon my body. And um, it's going to be fall soon. I have, um, I have a Halloween video coming up and a Halloween hop. My first hop ever. I'm very excited. Thank you very much, hook, line, and anchor. Um, I, um, as I said, I have a cool foiling technique. I think I have a crafty foiling technique for those of us who are cheap. So yes, Jess, I figured it out and um, it will be cool. And for those of you who listen to me blather on, um, yeah. So now on top of this, I'm going to sign off and uh, go back to bed. Love y'all. Keep on crafting.